Hey, eighth graders. So today we are going to go over covalent bonds. Uh, first things first, I kind of want to go over um, a couple of our rules. OK, so last week we went over ions. OK, so remember, an ion is what's an ion, um, by the way. So I'm going to have you guys take notes over this video and you guys are going to uh, turn this video into me. Um, I'll make a Dropbox for it. I did not make it yet. Um, but you guys need to keep up on this and make notes. Okay, so since you're not um, printing this stuff out and I had you guys do these last couple labs on email and you emailed them to me, um, I know sometimes when it's out of sight, item, out of mind, you don't have them in a folder and it's harder for you to go back or find them and stuff like that. So I think your guys' notebook's really important. So please go ahead and get a notebook out. I'm going to have you guys take a picture after it and then upload it to uh, Friday. Um, this coming Friday, the, let's say that today's the 21st, so the 23rd, this, this notebook will be due, okay? So anyways, an ion, all an ion is, is a charged particle. That's all it is. It can be positively charged, or it can be, ne whoop, underscore, negatively charged. That's it, okay? So when we have an atom, an atom is neutrally charged, and I think we talked about that last video. Okay, um, so I know, let's see, last video, you know, we did lithium ion. So that was lithium has three protons. And if it's an ion, well, it's just going to have uh, two electrons versus three protons. And so it will have that positive charge to it. Right. We talked about that. Um, and don't worry if you guys are having problems with this, if you're getting confused at home and stuff like that, you need to get a hold of me. OK. If you're not doing so well, you need to get a hold of me because this is going to be one of the tougher parts of the uh, of the eighth grade year. OK, so this is hard stuff. So you're not the only one out there struggling if you are. OK, so <clears throat> we got to remember our our rules. Right. So our first rule is uh, max of two electrons in the first energy level. Man, I can't type. Right? Number two, max of eight electrons in energy levels two through seven. Okay? Third one we made last week when we started making our ions. So I've been slow, we've been slowly adding uh, rules. So our third rule has to do with the ions. Everyone wants a full valence shell. Everybody wants a full valence shell, right? And valence, remember valence equals valence equals outer. Okay, so if we're talking about valence electrons, I'm talking about the electrons only in the outermost energy level. If I'm talking about the valence shell, I'm talking about the outermost energy level. Okay, and that's what we're really focusing on uh, right now when we're doing chemical bonds, when we're making ions. Uh, those, inner, those electrons on the inside or on the inner energy levels, uh, those do not do anything. They stay put. Only the electrons in the valence shells are the ones that are being transferred or they're being shared with other atoms in order, order to form ions, in order to form chemical, uh, chemical bonds. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to get on to covalent bonding today and we're going to add a fourth rule. And that fourth rule is everybody wants a full valence shell, but they're in order to add an electron, there must be room. Be room for that electron. Okay, and we'll talk about this as we go. Um, but if a molecule or if an atom already has eight valence electrons, right, that's the max that any, that two through seven can have, you know, so if there's already two electrons, or sorry, eight electrons in that valence shell, and there wants to be another atom come along and share or give an electron to it, it can't, right? So then that just can't happen. And we'll talk about what I mean exactly by that. So let's talk about right here. Um, so you guys already did this on the email, right, on the Google Sheet one. This is the, the paper copy of ours that we did in class here. So I'm just going to kind of do hydrogen and water. 
and then you guys are going to do the rest of them. Or you guys did the ones online. But like I said, you guys, I, th I think you guys need to really write this down in your notebook. So please write these down. So covalent bonds. A covalent bond. This is... Oh man, I need to make this longer, huh? Maybe I need to make this a little smaller. Is when... Electrons are shared. See how I have that capitalized? It's really important. So these electrons are shared between two or more atoms to fill their valence shell. So when chemical reactions occur, it's because of this. They, wanna f they want to fill their valence shell. Okay, so let's dive into this. What do I mean by this? Um, and again, pause this video anytime you have to in order to catch up on writing something like this. Um, down here, you can go ahead and just sketch this out real fast. It shouldn't be too, too hard to draw a hydrogen atom. But we have hydrogen right here where hydrogen has one electron, but it has room, right? We have room right here for one more because we know our first energy level our first energy level can hold a max of two electrons. So these guys would like to fill this up. Okay, how are they going to do that? Well, these guys are able to share their electrons. So we see that uh, this electron right here is negatively charged. It's attracted to this positively charged nucleus over here. And this hydrogen electron is attracted to this positively charged nucleus over here. Okay. The... Electrons from the opposite, the electrons from the opposite hydrogen atoms are attracted to the opposite atoms protons. Right? And this is a concept we have gone over many times. We've gone over this concept many times of, uh, of this positive and negative attract to each other, right? And that's the big thing. So that's simple enough. Number two, so what's going on over here? These guys, give me my screen out of the way here. These guys have now achieved octet. So in essence, these two electrons are in this valence shell. And they are also in this valence shell. This is their sharing, right? So up here, we capitalize shared. This is what I mean by that. These two hydrogen atoms are sharing their two electrons. So these, this hydrogen atom now has a full valence shell as well as this hydrogen over here. Both hydrogen atoms are sharing their electrons and... I'm not typing anything, am I? All right. Both atoms are sharing are sharing their electrons. And filling their valence shell. Boom. That's it. Uh, once their valence shell is full, it's full, right? It's, uh, it's like a hotel. These guys cannot take any more than they have room for. So can another hydrogen atom come in here and try to share its electron? No, there's just no room for it. There's no room for any more electrons for this hydrogen molecule. Okay. So let's go down here to number two. Number two says, it says, what are two conditions the atoms must have in order for covalent bonds uh, to form covalent bonds with one another? Well, one, there has to be room in their valence shells. Number one. 
Number two, there has to be a strong enough attraction between the electrons and protons of the opposites, opposite atoms. All right, so there's still that magnetic force that we kind of talked about last chapter about the states of matter and with all particles, right? There's always some sort of attraction that's going on. So <clears throat> these guys, electrons from other atoms are attracted to the protons of other atoms, right? That's what that's getting at. This electron is attracted to this proton and this electron is attracted to this proton. And that, that on top of their want to fill their valence shell has now full... Uh, pulled them together and this right here is what we call a chemical bond we have a single bond here when one electron from here and one electron here is being shared when we have a pair of electrons like this we call this one chemical bond okay now it says why is hydrogen molecule more stable well that's well why is a hydrogen molecule right h2 why is that more stable than just h well that's because uh the h2 has a full valence shell. H2 has a full valence shell. Okay. Um, and so if we look at, let me pull up a periodic table for you guys real, real fast. Found one right here. So if we look at these guys, helium right here has two electrons in its valence shell. So helium actually has a full valence shell, right? Because he only has one energy level. He's in row one, therefore he has one energy level. That energy level can only hold two electrons. Neon has two energy levels. That second energy level, right, can hold up to eight. So neon has eight electrons. Argon has eight electrons in its valence, right? The outer one. It has 18 total. It has 18 total, but its valence shell, its outermost energy level, has eight. And that's the most it can hold. And it's happy there. It's stable there. And it will not react with anybody. Krypton. So you guys are going to start asking about, well, doesn't Krypton have 36? And how does that fit into our diagrams and this, that, and the other? Remember, we are forgetting about these transition elements right here. Okay? So in that representative elements worksheet that I gave you guys online to fill out, I emailed it to you the other day. Because uh, the uh, the formatting got all screwy on me, but I took this transition section out right here. I took the lanthanides out, and I whoa, no, oh my goodness, redo. I don't know what I just did. Okay, anyways, twenty one to thirty, thirty nine through forty eight, fifty seven through eighty, eighty nine through uh, one twelve. I took all of those out, and so what I did was I took this block right here. And I took this block right here and I squished them together. And that's how you guys did that. Anyways, that's how we count these electrons on their valence shells is by doing that representative element sheet. And we forget about these transition elements for now. So anyways, Krypton, in effect, would still have eight electrons in its valence shell. Xenon here would still have eight electrons in its valence shell. These guys, remember in that video with Dmitry Mendeleev, uh, Dmitry Mendeleev added this whole group on at once because... They found argon, and they said it's not an element. Well, that's because it didn't react with anything. And then they found neon. Then they found helium. Then they found krypton, xenon. And they're like, these guys don't react with anything. They called them inert gases. And that's because they do not react with anything. However, so these guys all have a full valence shell. All of these guys right here, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, antimony, all of these guys are one electron away from having a full valence shell. Do you think they're very reactive? They are very reactive. All of these guys are two electrons away from filling their valence shell. So these guys all have six electrons in their valence shell. These guys are three away. These guys all have five valence electrons. Okay, so these guys are going to be pretty reactive here because they're really, really close. And the closer you are to being a closer you are to being a noble gas, the more reactive you are. Same thing if we go over here, hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium, these guys. They're one electron away from having a full valence shell. All they do is just have to lose an electron and they'll have full valence shell, right? Sodium loses 11 and then it has 10. So it has two in the inner and then eight in that outer electron. And it'll look like neon. Potassium can lose an electron, bump down and look like argon, right? 
Now these guys, remember, they don't lose their protons. They keep the same number of protons. The way they change their charge is by gaining or losing electrons. Okay, remember that. All right, so H2 has a full valence shell. That's why it's so stable. All right, why can't a third uh, hydrogen molecule, hydrogen atom join H2 and make it H3? Because it's a full valence shell, right? H2 has no room left in the valence shell for another electron. Okay, and so on and so forth. Um, the electron here in this oxygen is attracted to the proton here. So we know that we have six electrons in the valence cell, right? In the valence shell. So oxygen has eight total, but in the valence shell, one, two, three, four, five, six. So he needs two more. He needs two more electrons to achieve octet or to achieve that full valence shell. Oxygen still needs, or sorry, hydrogen still needs one right here, right? Hydrogen still needs one electron right here, right? So how's this going to happen? Well, oxygen is going to share an electron with hydrogen, and hydrogen is going to share one electron with oxygen, and so on and so forth. And so when that comes down, we see this chemical two chemical bonds occur. Here's one chemical bond. Here's the other chemical bond. And so we see these energy levels overlapping. And so if I count here, one, two, hydrogen now has two electrons in its valence shell. He's happy. Elect uh, hydrogen has one, two electrons in its valence shell. He's now happy. Hydro or oxygen here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now eight electrons um, is now how many? Eight valence electrons is how many oxygen has now. And he is now happy. And so that's a really important rule is making every single atom happy so that they all have octet, meaning octet means eight. They all have their full valence shell. Okay. So on and so forth. Um, I also believe in this activity. So you guys watch this and water and there was gases forming. What were the bubbles that formed? Well, we had hydrogen gas right? H2O. So we had H2O and we split it essentially. Electricity ran through H2O. And so this gave us H2. So here's our gas. And then we also made oxygen. Now we only made one oxygen atom because there's only one oxygen atom in water. Okay. So we had H2 because there's two hydrogens already and there was only one oxygen atom. So we only made oxygen. We did not make oxygen gas until, look, let's look at this. Why was there more hydrogen gas produced than oxygen? Well, it goes back to that last, that last drawing I just did. So we had H2O and we had H2 gas. So with one water molecule, we can make one molecule of hydrogen gas but we can only we can't even make an oxygen molecule yet all right o2 is what we breathe in we breathe in o2 so in order for us to get one single oxygen o2 molecule like this we have to actually split two water molecules okay so if we had two water molecules for every two water molecules we would have four hydrogens okay so we have our two hydrogens, our, our two hydrogen gases, our two hydrogen gases, and now we have two oxygens, two oxygens. So now this is why, so for every water molecule that's split, we have one hydrogen gas being made and a half of an oxygen molecule being made, okay? And you guys did the rest of the lab. Um, I just wanted to run through this with you and make sure you guys got it. Uh, there will be a quiz next Tuesday. It will not be on, on bonds like this, okay? The next quiz will be on Tuesday. It's going to be on, hey, these are all except for hydrogen, right? Hydrogen is not an alkali metal. But where's the alkali metals at? Well, that's group one elements except for hydrogen. Hydrogen's a gas, right? Where's the alkaline earth metals? That's these guys. You guys drew those notes the other day. Where's the transition elements? That's all of these guys here. Where's the lanthanides? That's these guys, right? 
Whereas the metalloids, those are these guys right here, boron, silicone, germanium, uh, arsenic, antimony, uh, tellurium, and polonium are all of the metalloids, so on and so forth. I may ask you, what are the rows called? The rows are called periods. What are the groups called? Or what are the columns called? The columns are called groups. I may say, what uh, if I go to period two and column three, what atom does it get? What element does that give give me? Well, here's here's period two and here's column three. That gives me boron. Okay, and you'll have to do stuff like that. Um, I may ask you how many electrons, how many neutrons does aluminum have? How many neutrons does aluminum have? Remember? So you'll have to do atomic mass minus the number of protons to get me the number of neutrons. And remember that number of neutrons has to be a full whole number. It cannot See, we have 26.981538. You can't have a decimal point like this. Number of neutrons is a whole number. Um, I may ask you to make an electron diagram of aluminum. So you may have to, I may give you a diagram and you have to fill up that diagram with the number of electrons. I may ask you to make an ion. So you may have to make an ion correctly. Okay. So like I said, if you guys have any problems, have any questions, please ask me. We do have a quiz next Tuesday. Okay. Have a good one, guys. And don't forget your notebook. Those notes need to be turned in to me by Friday. I'll make a Dropbox for that on Teams.